Okay, so on Canvas, um, and hopefully I remembered you got one in class, but sometimes I forget, so. Okay, but there's this factoring thinking map. And basically what we wanna do is, today we wanna talk about the idea that we won't just be given problems to factor in one specific type. So it's not like it's gonna say factor the following by grouping. Okay, we're gonna have to recognize that something needs to be factored. And then on top of that, we are then going to have to know what type of factoring we are going to use with it. Okay, so this is sort of a left to right thinking map. That the first thing we are always going to do is see if we can factor out a GCF. Because factoring out a GCF works with any number of terms. So we always want to check that first. Okay, and then we'll move on and count the number of terms and see which category we fall in over here. So if there's two terms, we'll look for a special case. If it's three terms, we'll look for some type of trinomial. And if it's four terms, we will factor by grouping. Okay, so we're just taking all the different ways that we have learned how to factor at this point, and we're saying if we are given a problem and it just says factor it, how are we going to decide what to do? So still in the world of factoring, no new skills, just putting them all in the same bucket today. So let's say we are given 6x squared plus 8x plus 4. And we are asked to factor this. It's really easy for my students to just look at this and go, oh, it looks like a trinomial, so 6 times 4 is 24. And let's start listing the pairs. The problem is that you can list all your pairs, but this is not a factorable trinomial. right? We really want to look at this list, and we want to start over here and says, is there a GCF? That's what we want to look for first. So can we think of something that will go into six, that will also go into eight, that will also go into four? Yes, that's a two. Do they all have the variable? No. So we'll divide out that two squared plus four x plus two. We can't go any further. Okay, so here's our factorization with that. Okay, how about if we are given a squared minus 49. Okay, so we look at our map here, right? First thing we're gonna check for, is there a GCF? Well, one and 49, nope, they both don't have the variable, so nothing there. Then we're gonna count the number of terms. This has two terms, so we're gonna look and see if this has a special case. Well, it is subtraction, it is two terms, so we wanna see if they're both perfect squares, so half of the exponent, seven times seven will give us 49. So we know that this is a, per, a special case, so this will factor into an a with a seven, a with a seven, one addition, and one subtraction. Now if you're like, wait a minute, I don't remember how to factor a special case or those rules, you wanna go back and watch the video notes over factoring special cases. 3y to the third plus 12y squared plus 5y plus 20. Okay, so again, first thing that we're doing is we're looking to see if there is a GCF. Can we think of something that will go into 3, 12, 5, and 20? No, they don't all have the variables, so nothing we can do there. Okay, so then we're going to count the number of terms. So this has four terms, so we wanna see if we can factor this by grouping. So factoring by grouping is where we split this in half. Okay, we'll factor out our GCF over here, which is gonna be a three Y squared, right? We're using that smaller exponent. When we divide that out, that will leave us with the Y plus four. If you're wondering where I got this from, then go back and watch your video notes over factoring by grouping, or even factoring out a GCF. Okay, over here our GCF is five. So that will leave us with a Y plus four. And so we'll put together our two GCFs, three Y squared plus five, and a Y plus four. 
Now, this works for any type of problem. So whether you're given a trinomial, whether you're given something, I'm not gonna go back through and do every single type of problem. I just really want you to focus on the fact that we really are checking for this GCF first before we go into the number of terms. Because just like I said up here, it isn't always what it might initially jump out to be. Okay, and that GCF is sort of usually the problem. So again, just a similar idea here, right? This is two terms. It is subtraction, but this is not a special case, right? And if we check for that GCF first, we go, oh yeah, there is a GCF. Okay, that might be the way that we need to be factoring it. So use this flow chart as you're going through the practice problems today, making sure you're factoring, checking for a GCF first and then factoring by the number of terms. If you need to go back and check your notes for the individual situation and how we factor that, you can do that.